With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to Amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. Four teams, two games, one Lombardi trophy. That's right. It all comes down to this, folks. It's championship weekend in the NFL with the number one seeded teams from both the NFC and the AFC making it safely through to this stage. They're joined by the number three seeded teams in each of the respective conferences and for three of the teams taking part. They've already been to the Super Bowl. They know what it's like to lift the Lombardi trophy in celebration. But for one of them, the Detroit Lions, not only have they never lifted the Lombardi Trophy, they've never even been to a Super Bowl. So if they can get a win this weekend, it will be breaking new ground in Detroit, Michigan, and that fan base is craving success over the San Francisco 49ers. What's going to happen? Well, let's turn the page and find out as we look ahead to Championship Weekend in the NFL. Graves on Gridiron. With Richard Graves. Welcome along, folks. This is Graves on Gridiron. I am your host, Richard Graves, and we are getting ever closer to the Super Bowl itself in Las Vegas, Nevada this year. And a reminder that Graves on Gridiron will be there throughout the week, bringing you a fresh podcast with exclusive interviews, chats with the coaching staff, all the glitz, the glamour, the razzmatazz that goes with Super Bowl week. We'll have it daily on a new podcast each day of the week, building up to Super Bowl 58 itself. So look out for that wherever you download your podcasts. But before we get to that point, there's two more games that need to be settled, and that happens this weekend. Let's briefly look back on the divisional round where we went two and two against the line. Saturday wasn't so good, a bit like the wildcard weekend. It was the Baltimore Ravens this time that denied us by just half a point. 0-2 on Saturday night, 2-0 and against the line on Sunday as the Lions covered against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then not only did the Kansas City Chiefs cover that plus 2.5 line, but as I suggested last week, do not underestimate Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and the Chiefs in postseason football. They went into Buffalo and they got the job done. For the third time in four years, the Buffalo Bills' Achilles heel turned out to be Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. That leads us to this weekend then. It's been the goal since opening night, way back in the first week of September, when the Lions went to the Chiefs and won in Arrowhead Stadium. All 32 teams had one goal, to make it to the Super Bowl in Vegas this February. Only four teams have that opportunity now. So let's take a look at those two games ahead then. And we start with the NFC Championship game. The Detroit Lions going to the San Francisco 49ers. The Lions, the number three seed. The 49ers, the number one seed. And the total points line will not surprise you. It is set at 51 and a half points. And why wouldn't it be when you've got two such prolific scoring teams such as these in the NFL this season? As I've mentioned, the Detroit Lions have never been to a Super Bowl. In fact, in 30 years, they hadn't won a, a playoff game. Not only do they win one this season, they now win back-to-back playoff games. You have to go all the way back to 1957 to find the last time that the Lions uh, were championship winners and the Super Bowl wasn't even conceived uh, at that point. So potentially new ground for Dan Campbell and his team this weekend. Um Super Bowl 58, you have to say, in the nicest possible sense for the Lions, was a goal, but probably more of a dream when we started out this season. They surpassed expectations in the second half of last season. And you remember they missed out despite beating the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field on the final game of the regular season last year. Well, no, no such uh, misfortune this time. They've won two playoff games. They're here just potentially 60 minutes away 
from a place in Super Bowl 58. And to do that, they'll have to overcome the team that's been the best in the NFC this season, the San Francisco 49ers, and what's more, do it on San Francisco's own patch. Arguably for me, the most balanced team in the NFC, ranking the top six in nearly every major category, both on offense and defense. But there is a caveat to this. Star wide receiver Debo Samuel picked up a shoulder injury in that win over the Packers last weekend. He didn't take any further part in the game. He's currently being assessed. And one one source has said to me that his chance of making the game this weekend is put at no better than 50-50. Cal Shanahan, the head coach, did say at the start of the week that there was no fracture uh, picked up in scans on that shoulder and they were taking it day by day. He, he is a vital cog in this San Francisco 49ers offense, not because purely of his receiving ability, but the fact that he's able to run the ball out of the backfield as well. And it's the physicality with which he finishes his runs, which helps wear down opposing defenses. Uh, it, it's something that we need to keep an eye on. It's something that could affect this game. Um, but equally, you look on the other side of the ball, and this is where the Lions might um, get a bit of a, a pick me up because they're no mugs. You know, you talk about the the Forty ers being balanced, but here you've got the the Detroit Lions who can score multiple times in a heartbeat, as we've seen on several occasions this season. And they themselves have an offense which ranks in the top five of most major categories, including scoring. They average 27.1 points a game. And what makes this Lions team even more dangerous is that their defense for me now appears to have improved dramatically towards the back end of the season. And certainly in the two playoff games that we've seen against both the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the LA Rams before that, they made big plays when the pressure was at its greatest and the moment was most intense. Before that, remember, towards the end of the regular season, Christmas Eve, they went into Dallas, a place that was a fortress uh, for the Dallas Cowboys and has been throughout the last two regular seasons. They ultimately had a 16-game unbeaten home run when they beat the Detroit Lions. But they did hold the Cowboys to just 20 points in that game. And but for a two-point conversion and some officiating controversy, who knows, that that run for the Cowboys may have stopped at 15. The, The Detroit Lions perhaps rightly feel a little bit aggrieved that they didn't get the win. Um, But the point is, their defense played at a higher level than we'd seen for most of the season. And that's been taken into the postseason as well. And for me, it can be no coincidence that the return to health of defensive back C.J. Gardner-Johnson in the secondary has something to do with this and has helped to shore up their defense, certainly um, in the passing game. And this makes it a, a tricky opposition for, for the San Francisco 49ers, therefore, if they don't have all their star players healthy uh, and on the field. Um, and I don't know whether it was just a, a case of a, a little rust, because remember, the 49ers had had a, a bye week by virtue of being the number one seed and had rested most of their starters for the final regular season game um, of the campaign. So whether it was a little bit of rust or there was some nervous nervous energy in there last weekend for, for their opening game in the playoffs, Look, San Francisco struggled to get by the Green Bay Packers last weekend. And quarterback Brock Purdy, to me at least, hasn't yet proved to be quite as ruthless in the postseason uh, as he certainly has in the regular season. That being said, I have to point out in four playoff games, his only defeat came last year at this stage in the NFC Championship game at the Philadelphia Eagles when he was injured early in the game. And although he came back in, he wasn't able to to throw the ball. So uh, his record is three and one. I'm sort of willing to scrub off that one defeat um, because they were definitely mitigating circumstances uh, there w- without doubt. Uh, the 49ers, of course, do have the, the option of leaning on their running game. And what an option it is. Christian McCaffrey, arguably this team's MVP um, and their third ranked running offense as well is always key when it comes to the postseason. But remember, That is also going strength on strength because, again, you look at this Detroit Lions defensive line and teams, frankly, just don't run successfully on this Lions defense. And that's because they rank number two in the NFL this season when defending the run. One other thing, when you think about the the total points line, remember, 51 and a half points has been set as the line for total points in this game. Remember how tight that game was in the divisional round last year when the Dallas Cowboys came to play the San Francisco 49ers. Once again, 
two explosive offences that can put points on the board, and it ended up being a defensive battle. The Niners ran out 23 points to 17 winners in that game. So that's 40 points combined. I've got a sneaking suspicion with it. The improved play of the Detroit Lions, and remember, of course, it was by one score that they knocked off the the LA Rams in a relatively, uh, I wouldn't say low scoring, but it certainly wasn't as high scoring a game as we might have expected in Wild Card Weekend, and it was a struggle for three quarters at least against the Buccaneers. Um, Brock Purdy has yet to prove to me that he can sling that ball around and put points at will in playoff games. And therefore, I'm not saying that the San Francisco 49ers don't win this game. For me, just flat out, I think they do. But when you look at the total points line, this Detroit Lions have something special about them. I think they're going to be competitive right to the end. The opening line for the game has the 49ers as heavy seven-point favorites. I think it's tighter than that. And as a result, I think it affects the total points line as well. So I'm going to look at that 51.5-point line and say take the under in this NFC Championship game. Graves on Gridiron with Richard Graves. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, lo. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to Amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. Okay, let's look ahead to the AFC Championship game. The defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs are still in the mix, despite what by their standards will be deemed an average season. And they go to the Baltimore Ravens, who looked mightily impressive last weekend in their first outing of the postseason this time around. You know, you remember how we spoke about the San Francisco 49ers, maybe being a little bit nervous, maybe having a bit of rust to knock off. No such trouble for the Ravens at home to the Houston Texans. That defense is legit, and the way they came out in the second half was hugely impressive. Equally, credit to the Kansas City Chiefs. They were underdogs going into Buffalo. You can understand why. Their offense hasn't been firing on all cylinders, as we've come to expect this year. And yet in the postseason, they put 26 points on the board against the Miami Dolphins, 27 last weekend on the road in Buffalo. And this defense has yet to give up 30 points to any opponent this season. This is playoff football. This is a powerhouse matchup. And for one, I cannot wait. The Chiefs against the Ravens and, of course, the NFL MVP elect, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens against the reigning, defending, Super Bowl champion Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. It was for moments such as these that playoff football was made. Two of the best in the business going head to head. One wants to retain his crown. The other very much wants to take it. Lamar Jackson looked every bit the soon to be named most valuable player for me last weekend as he steered the Baltimore Ravens to victory over Houston. You, you have to say the reports coming out of the locker room that it was a struggle at halftime, locked at 10 that game, and Lamar Jackson apparently went in uh, to the locker room uh, and held court and told a few home truths, um, changed a few things on the fly, and then in the second half, wow, what a performance by Mal- Lamar Jackson and the way he ran his offense and certainly this Baltimore Ravens defense, which, remember, did not give up a single offensive touchdown to the Texans in that game. Their only, the only time they visited the end zone was on a punt return in the second quarter. Meanwhile, of course, you had Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and the Chiefs suddenly click and looked like the offense uh, of old, the offense that we've become used to and broke Bill's hearts. This is a battle of the two top scoring defenses in the NFL this year. The Ravens give up 16 and a half points a game on average. The Chiefs 17.3 points a game on average. But 
You can talk about the football side of it. We all know this is a game where the quarterbacks are going to take the eye. The question is, can Lamar Jackson, armed with a vastly improved receiving core this season, which, by the way, likely includes tight end Mark Andrews returning from a leg injury this weekend, and the number one ranked rushing attack in the league, outshine Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, who, as a duo, became the leading touchdown combination in postseason history when they scored two touchdowns between them combined against the Buffalo Bills. That meant they surpassed Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski um, and have 16 touchdowns between them, or should I say combined between them. Uh, Much like last weekend in Buffalo, I expect this to be a true heavyweight clash. On paper, it is one the Ravens should win They should come out on top. But, and it is a massive but, I said it last weekend, I'm going to say it this weekend. These are the Kansas City Chiefs, folks. They've been to the Super Bowl in three of the last four years. They've won two of them. Like Baltimore, their defense has been the better unit this season, but that offense is finally showing signs of life. Once again, it's tough to see a scenario where either team runs away with this one. It's going to be tight. It's going to be physical. It's going to be intense. So expect all of that. And whoever wins, for me at least, they only win this game by one score. And for that reason, I look at the line. The Baltimore Ravens are three and a half point favorites coming into this game. It's too much. I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs. You might sit at home listening to this in your car, wherever you might be, and go, what? Have you lost your mind? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. You look at Super Bowl 57. The Eagles were favorites against the Kansas City Chiefs. They found a way to get the job done. You look at last weekend. The Bills are favorites. Home field advantage over the Kansas City Chiefs. Mahomes and the Chiefs find a way to get the job done. So when you give me a line where you're giving the Kansas City Chiefs a three and a half point start, albeit on the road, yeah, sure, the Baltimore Ravens might find a way to get it done but they don't beat the Kansas City Chiefs by four points. Give me the Chiefs to cover at plus 3.5. Graves on Gridiron. Okay, so there are our previews of the two championship games this weekend, starting with the Lions going to the 49ers. Look at the total points line on that and take the under, under 51.5 points combined in that game. And then onto the AFC Championship, another heavyweight clash in every sense. The Chiefs, the champions, going up against the Ravens, who want to take that crown from them. The Chiefs are three and a half point underdogs. Give me Kansas City to cover at plus 3.5. Of course, as I always do, I put out a tweet um, on Monday asking you which combination you thought were going to make it to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, Nevada next month. It might come as no surprise. You've gone with the two number one seeded teams in the NFL this season. Uh, The Ravens and the 49ers, you think, will get there. Over 1,100 of you uh, took part in that poll. 49% of you said the Ravens and 49ers with the Chiefs 49ers, 18%. The uh, Ravens and Lions to make it 17%. And Chiefs and Lions, the outsiders of that four-horse race, at 16%. Remember, first and foremost, as I always say at this point in the show, folks, it's about having fun. So remember that when you're watching these games. It's enjoyment. Um, If you want to read about these two matchups and how I've broken them down, then go to my website, rdgmedia.uk. Click on that Talking Sport tab and you will see NFL Championship Weekend Preview. Click on that and you can read all about both games. Equally on social media, feel free to hit me up on Facebook. It's Graves on Gridiron. On X, it's at Richard Graves one And also, um, we are on Instagram, at RDG Media UK. And let's not forget, there will not be a show next week as both teams rest ahead of Super Bowl week. But we will return on Monday, the 5th of February, with a show. And then there will be a fresh new podcast every day of the week, leading right up to Super Bowl Sunday. All the action, all the reaction, all the news, the views, the special guests, the exclusive interviews right here from Las Vegas on Graves on Gridiron. I'm looking forward to it. It will be a blast no matter which two teams get through. It is sure to be a humdinger of a matchup. We're all looking ahead now to Super Bowl 58 and come this Sunday night, we'll know which two teams are going to Las Vegas to compete 
for that Lombardi trophy. But for now, so long, everybody. Subscribe to Graves on Gridiron wherever you listen to podcasts and keep up to date with the latest on Twitter. Search for Richard Graves 1. That's Richard Graves, the number one. Sports Social Podcast Network. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.